Hello, welcome to Board with Paint. Today we'll be unboxing the Batman the Animated Series Shadow of the Bat All In Pledge from Kickstarter. Here's the box that was delivered, so let's open it up and see what's inside. So on top, there's this useless piece of paper. Throw that away. And we've got four boxes inside. We've got the Arkham Asylum expansion, the all-in big box, the base game, Shadow of the Bat, and the Kickstarter stretch goal. I'll pull these out and show them to you one by one. So here's the core box with the classic animated series logo. Then we've got the stretch goal box. The big box, which is a smaller box than any of the others. Interestingly enough, and the Arkham Asylum expansion, and another useless piece of paper. Let's start by cracking open the core box. Okay, looking inside, we've got what looks to be a punch board. Pretty thick stack of them here. We've got some reference sheets. These would be the map tiles. And of course, tons and tons of miniatures. I'm really looking forward to painting these. And then underneath, we have some markers. I think those will attach to the miniatures. We've got a bag of dice, cards, the rule book. This is actually the original cover art for the game. There was a big controversy in the Kickstarter because Warner Brothers didn't like the fact that Joker was holding a gun. So they had to change the cover and it delayed the Kickstarter. Anyways, those were two of the scenario books. They gave you some empty bags to put components in. And then we have cards for characters and villains. And underneath there are more cards. I'll show you the map tiles first. This first one looks like the interior of a museum. You see in the corner here some bones of a dinosaur. The back side just looks like an empty room.
This is like a rooftop, I believe. And on the other side, we have the police department. Next up looks like an executive boardroom of some kind. On the opposite side, it looks like maybe a bank. It's hard to tell what this is. Maybe another room in the museum. And then we have another large empty room. I think that's a desk in the middle of the room, so this might be some important bigwig's office. And then we have a street. This one, there's vats of acid or something. I wonder if this is um, Axis Chemicals. Then we have what looks like two buildings with an alleyway between them, maybe? some kind of a blimp. That's pretty cool. On the other side. Looks like it could be another rooftop. Then the last tile on the first side we have another street. And on the other side this looks like the front of a building. Maybe Wayne Manor? Now we'll take a look at the cardboard pieces that you have to punch out. I'm not going to punch them out in this video. We'll just look at the sheets. So here we have health tokens and maybe some kind of status at the bottom. More tokens here. Not sure what a lot of this is for. We have two faces coin. And oh yeah, the other side is all scratched up. I hope there's a gameplay reason for that. That would be really cool. Various other tokens here. I'm assuming those are status effects or something to do with the dice. They look like the dice space. Here we have, looks like various scatter terrain vehicles. More tokens. We have a few cars over here. The other side, things are different. There's a fire truck, some other cars. Looks like there's a lot of options for terrain here. Uh, I believe these are objective tokens, so you'll mark different things on the map that you need to accomplish different goals. Some more tokens in various rooms, terrain. Some looks like dynamite, fire extinguishers. Another room on the back. Here we have some more train tokens. We've got some Jim Gordon tokens. That's probably the Smilex gas. These are the time bomb tokens, so I you use that when defusing a time bomb. I think that's an interesting little mini game you can do. And then we've got some more various pieces of terrain, more time bomb stuff. Uh, an overlay for, I think, cooperative mode or maybe the Dark Knight mode. And here's the last sheet of cardboard punch-outs. I guess this is water and fire. Put a stretch limousine there. Next up we'll look at these reference cards. So we've got separate sets, one for cooperative mode. One of the interesting things about this game is you can play it as a cooperative game, everyone teaming up against the villain, 
or you can have someone play as the villain and have a many against one scenario. So here's the competitive mode sheets. And there's a game reference sheet on the back which goes over different status effects. Goes over what some of these icons mean on the dice. Some helpful information here. And then here's a round tracker. And there's Joker side and a Batman side. It's the same thin cardboard as the reference sheet. Right now we'll take a quick look at the rule book. I like that it's sort of comic book form factor. It has thin pages, sort of like a comic book. We have here the uh, miniature layout, component summary, and then we get into the rules, setup, cooperative, competitive modes. There's a PDF available of this online if you want to look at it. Then there are two scenario books split into two parts. go into the episodes which I believe these are all named after episodes of the animated series and you sort of recreate them in the game so this first one is the one with man bat here's the map layout some rules at the bottom set up and it moves along and then we have a second scenario book which just continues the previous one. So it starts on episode 7 and goes on. And you can take these two scenario books and they make the original cover art if you put them together. Now we'll pull out the hero sheets and villain sheets. These are the same thin cardboard that the reference sheets are made out of. Here's Batgirl, have a faction symbol on the back. Then we have Batman. It's double-sided. I'm not sure what the purpose of that is. I'll have to look it up in the book. Here's Catwoman. She's only single-sided. Jim Gordon. These are your playable heroes. Robin. And you have the Beat Cop. I believe if you're Jim Gordon, you get the Beat Cops. This is Isis, Catwoman's cat. There's a card for the Innocent Bystanders. And here's the Catwoman card. I believe Catwoman, there's two cards, because you can play her as a hero or a villain. So that's her hero sheet, and that's her villain sheet. And speaking of villains, we're now onto those. Here's Harley Quinn. Man Bat, Mr. Freeze, Penguin, The Riddler, Scarecrow, Oh, these are double-sided as well. I think one is for competitive and one is for cooperative mode. But I'll start showing you both sides. Here's the Joker. In the back. Two-Face is next. Crusher, this is one of the thugs you get as the villain character. The uh, faceless masses that Batman can beat up. Here's an Enforcer, another one. And the hired gun. And then Isis again, I believe this is the villain card for Isis. And then we also have uh, two time bombs for the time bomb minigame. 
some scenarios you'll have to cut the wires on the time bomb to complete an objective. All right, let's start looking at some cards. Starting off, here's gadget cards. This is the Batarang. These are pieces of equipment you can take into scenarios. So there's a bunch, I think enough for each hero. Caltrops. First aid kit. Gas mask. Grappling gun, of course you need this for Batman. Knockout gas. Search goggles. Smoke bombs. Another Batman classic. Then we have throwing blade. Looks like there's five of each of those. And then we have this group of cards. These are the initiative cards, which I believe are only used in cooperative mode. So we'll have one for each character. There's multiple copies for the thugs, looks like. All right, let's open up another one of these packs of cards and see what we got. More initiative cards. And now we'll look at the villain ability cards. Each villain has a unique set of cards. So start with Mr. Freeze. And I'll just show these and kind of go through them. I won't name each one. Scarecrow's cards. I like that each card has unique art. And I believe this is all original art for the board game. It's not just lifted from the animated series. Here's the Joker. Penguin. These cards are only used in competitive mode. So these will be the cards that the villain player uses to control the villains. Next up is the Riddler. Two-Face. Oh, I just noticed there's rules on his card that have you flip the coin and take a different action based on the result. So that's very thematic to this character. I really like that. Now we've got the villain thug. So here's the crusher. This is the big guy that uses his fists.
Then we've got the Enforcer, which I think is sort of the standard thug. This is also a hand-to-hand -hand attacker, I believe. And then the hired gun. This is the ranged thug. Time to open up this last pack of cards. Next up, we have some more villain cards. These are generic cards that I think go into a common deck. Uh, so not all the cards are tied directly to a particular villain. There are several duplicates here. Now we're on to Catwoman's cards. And Harley Quinn. There's her giant mallet. And Man Bat. Now we'll take a look at the hero cards. Here's Batgirl. And of course we have Batman. Next up is Catwoman. This is if you want to use her as a hero. And then Commissioner Gordon. And finally, Robin. And the last bit of cards are ally cards. So here we have Alfred, Batman as an ally, Dr. Leslie Tompkins, Lucius Fox, and another Batman ally. I'm not sure how that's used. Now we'll take a quick look at the dice. They feel a little bit on the light side. They are engraved with the shapes on the dice filled with ink or paint. I don't know enough about the rules yet to know what any of these symbols mean. We'll take a quick look at a couple other ones. These are all pretty unique, I think. Each character gets their own set of dice. Here's the Batman symbol on one of them. And last but not least, let's look at the miniatures. 
these are probably what sold me on backing this Kickstarter. So first we have the Crusher, which is one of the villain henchmen. You get four of these in the box. Now just my first impression here, the miniature is nice and smooth. They're very hard and rigid. Really high quality in my opinion. No real visible mold lines either. Looks really good, nice and smooth. Here's Jim Gordon. This is one of the playable heroes. Next up we have the female bystander. There's three of these. There's also male bystanders, which are a different sculpt. Next up, here's Two-Face. Penguin. I like he's got the fancy cigarette and his trick umbrella. Really nice looking. Batgirl. And of course, Batman. And Robin. Here's Officer Montoya. I don't know if she's fully playable or if she is part of the group that goes with Jim Gordon. While I have her out, there's also this pack of yellow discs that attach to the bottom of the miniatures like this. So I guess this marks different objective pieces for various scenarios. Mr. Freeze. Scarecrow. This is a really cool looking sculpt. With the fear gas and the clouds. That plastic's really thin there, but it's actually quite rigid. Feeling it now, and it's, uh... Yeah, that's pretty sturdy, considering how little plastic is attached to the thing. The Riddler? Then we've got Mark Hamill, sorry, the Joker. Man Bat. Pretty large wingspan on this guy. Let me grab Batman. I'll show you them to scale with each other. So you can see he's significantly larger. Here's Catwoman's pet Isis.
Harley Quinn. Detective Bullock. I think, again, he accompanies Jim Gordon. I'm not sure if he's playable by himself or not. Catwoman. Let's see, she's got her iconic whip. It's actually pretty sturdy. I don't think that's going to break off. That's a thin piece. Then you get six of these enforcers. So I think these are the smaller thugs for the villain side. Uh, another hand-to-hand -hand combat thug. Here's the male bystander. You get three of these. Here's the hired gun. This is another one of the villain thugs. And this will be the ranged attacker. There are six in the box. And then finally, you get the beat cop, who is an ally, I think, also with Jim Gordon. And that's everything in the core box. Moving right along, we'll open up the Arkham Asylum expansion. This should also be available at retail if I remember correctly. One of the main features of this box is the Clayface mode, where you get sort of a hidden traitor mechanic where one of the heroes is secretly Clayface and they get a card that tells them their identity that you keep secret from the rest of the players and then at some point in the scenario, you reveal yourself as Clayface. So I think that's a pretty neat idea, very thematic. So let's pop this open and see what's inside. So on top we've got the book. There's just one book in this box. Unless there's one underneath. We've got a couple of punch boards. Additional map tiles. Then the miniature tray. Has this plastic cover on top, which is nice. More cards. Bags for holding components. And the character and villain sheets. Let's take a look here at the manual. This also has the scenarios in it, but you have the... Uh, Again, you have the tray reference. Here's your rules for a clay face mode that I mentioned earlier. Contents. And then it goes into additional episode scenarios. This will be scenarios that use the villains from the Arkham Asylum expansion box. Now we'll look at the punch boards, pull them out of the plastic here. We've got a bunch more tokens, we have some additional terrain, some small corridors. Next one, a couple more corridors, some more terrain pieces, have some more vehicles here, different on the other side. And that's all the punch out stuff you get. Here are the map tiles.
here we've got something that I would bet is Poison Ivy's Lair. And we have a building of some kind with a couple desks. More plant life, I imagine, related to Poison Ivy. And this is this might be the inside of Arkham Asylum. You can see the beds and cells here. This looks like a newsroom or maybe like a talk show set. You can reenact the part of the Joker movie if you want. Then we have looks like another rooftop scene. Just a room, kind of interestingly shaped. And another rooftop, I believe. Now we'll look at the villain sheets. There's actually no additional heroes in this box, from what I understand. We've got Clayface. Baby Doll. Here's another Clayface. Not sure what the difference is here. Probably related to Clayface mode. Clock King. Jervis Tetch. I don't know why they don't call him the Mad Hatter. I'm gonna call him the Mad Hatter. Killer Croc. Hit you with a rock. Lock up. Maxi Zeus. Poison Ivy. Ventriloquist. Bud and Lou, these are the Joker and Harley's hyenas. And finally we have Poison Ivy's killer plant. Now we'll take a look at the cards. So here's the deck of Clayface cards. I think these are for the Clayface character to use when you're playing in the hidden trader mode. There's some additional ally cards here. We get Summer Gleason, Hugo Strange, and Hugo Strange. I guess there's a glitch in the matrix. Here we have more cards for the Clayface mode. These are the cards you'll get when you start the game and it tells you if you are who you actually are or if you are Clayface. Then we go to the initiative cards. These are used to keep track of the order in which the players take their actions.
now we'll look at the ability cards. Starting out, we'll look at Baby Doll. Here's Clayface when you're using him as an actual villain. So much Clayface in this box, they maybe should have called it the Clayface expansion. Clock King. Then we've got the Mad Hatter. Here are Killer Crocs cards. Lock up. Maxi Zeus. Poison Ivy. Ventriloquist. Cards for the Hyenas, Bud and Lou. And these should be the last ones, the uh, Killer Plant cards. And finally, we will take a look at the miniatures, starting with Clock King. Poison Ivy is next. Killer Plants, you get three of these in the box. Here are the Hyenas. I'm not sure how to tell the difference between them though. Here's Hugo Strange.
baby doll. That's a fun little miniature. And here's Clayface. This is another large miniature similar to the Man Bat in the core set. I'll grab another one here just to show you. Here's uh, Poison Ivy next to him, so he is pretty big. Here's Lockup. Killer Croc with his big rock. Maxi Zeus with his big lightning. Ventriloquist. And the last one is the Mad Hatter. And that's it for the Arkham Asylum expansion. I'm actually going to end the video here and do a part two because it's getting really long and we still have two more boxes to open. So be on the lookout for a part two coming soon. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching Board With Paint. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and click the notification icon. And you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook where I sometimes post things. I'll also be starting a painting tutorial series for this game, so be on the lookout for that coming soon. And until next time, happy gaming and happy painting.